increasing in the Eastern Cape and our normal time slot this Friday will be on the turf surface. Looking forward to the eight races, our feature being the listed Port Elizabeth Gold Cup over 3,200 metres. Getting us started, race one is a juvenile plate over 1,200 metres for the fillies. And here, my first three selections will be four, five, and three. Horse number four, Sweet the Sound, was a winner last time out after being narrowly defeated on debut. She won well in her last, and she really looks as if she's on the up and she's going places. I do think she can follow up. She'll have to respect the likes of number five, Waymaker, in receipt of that apprentice claim two and a half. I do think that last time out in listed company, she gave a good account of herself when running fourth behind Homely Girl. And uh, prior to that, second to Soundcheck, who's really gone on to do good things. So Waymaker, I do think is very much a runner. Likewise for number three, Pot Socks, I really wouldn't write her off. She followed her good win with a fair third in the Dahlia Plate, which took on male opposition. It was a really good effort, and I do think she'll also be competitive here. Race two is a juvenile plate, staying over that 1,200 meter straight trip. Five, two, and three are the numbers of interest. And of course, the Keep It Secret gel the Keep It Secret Path for Gelding representing Snaith Racing is of huge interest as he was a facile winner last time out when sweeping to victory by five and a quarter lengths. So far, only been one run out of that form line. It has been a winner, and it all looks really positive for Keep It Secret to go on and uh, win back to back. Norton Sound looks to be the best of our local hopes against him. That's horse number two, and he has been second in both of his latest starts when finding whatever next a little bit too good. Both of those runs have been in features, so he's not to be left out or underestimated either. Number three, A-grade Marmalade, followed his maiden win with a good third last time out. It was over a touch further. He's back in trip here, but certainly does look capable of finding the placings. Race three, we stay over the 1200 meter straight trip for a maiden plate. And I do think there's a couple of chances here, have elected to go two, three, and one in what looks to be an open event. A lot of these horses have been racing over a little bit further. Number two, Mr. Mainstay could find the 1200 on the sharp side for him, but if he gets back into producing some of his better runs from the Western Cape, he certainly is a runner. The Yard are happy with the work that he's showing and do make him a runner, even though he probably would prefer a touch further. Number three is Brave Star, and he's another one who ran a cracking race last time out when finishing third over 1400. And I say a cracking race because he actually got quite a bump at the top of the straight. It almost took his legs out from underneath him, and I, I think he still did a, a very good job to keep concentrated and run on the way as he did to go down only three quarters of a length behind Shades of Blue. So he's another one that's going to perhaps be caught out by the fact that he steps back a furlong, but on that very honest run last time out, he's not without chance. Number one, Chocolate is also a horse that's been racing over a bit further recent, but unlike the others, he could actually enjoy cutting back and trip as he's a very pacey individual and he just hasn't been rounding up over 1400 in the mile of recent. So back to 12 could see him be able to use his pace to best effect. Race four, Merit Rated 68 Handicap and here 10, 2 and 4. Uh, is the way I will be going and I lead with the likes of the Tara Lang runner number 10 Wang Gang Midnight. I do think that his better efforts of recent have come over 1200 meters. He's fallen in the ratings. He races with a rating of 55 here, meaning he'll carry only 52 and a half. And if you look at his penultimate, which was over course and distance, where he finished a good third, beaten only a length, back over it today, he really could be a little bit of value. Horses he has to beat, possibly number two, El Falak, and I say possibly because he's only had one run and it was a win. So although he's in handicapped company for the first time, he really is a little bit of an unknown entity. He did win one well and he won very positively, coming from off the pace, doing his best work late and going away to win. So I do think there's more to come from him and I won't be leaving him out here. Number four, Tiafilia, his form is self-explanatory. He is super honest. He is knocking hard and he's overdue to find the winner's box for the third time. So you can't be leaving him out. Race five is a play, is a conditions plate for the Phillies and Mares and 1400 meters is the trip they will be running over. I think that there is some lovely local form in this race, but most definitely the horse that stands out is the Cape Raider and that is number eight, Sovereign Secret. Her... Cape form is 
really decent her latest runs in the cape in the last time she visited port elizabeth she swooped to victory when beating similar um, by three and a half lengths to win the listed ladies bracelet uh, added to her form and her achievement so far she is really thrown in at the weights here and i do think she's going to be hard to beat the local hopes number two too fat to fly is a horse that really caught my eye last time out when running a good third behind santa Teresa over a trip that was a little bit of a stretch for her and she just didn't see out the mile that day she's going to relish being back a furlong here and i think we're going to see even better from her she isn't well weighted but i do think she can still get a look in a horse that does come in well weighted in fact of the local form number 10 golden chance is uh, the best weighted runner and she'll carry 51 and a half here she's doing everything except win that winner's box just keeps eluding her and i do think that with the best weighted advantage and enjoying the trip as she does she should be in the shake up race six is a Phillies and 64 handicap over 2000 meters this is a very open field i do think it's actually the hardest field on the card and I've gone for a horse that perhaps is not one of the more fancied runners in the way of number 10, Soho Spirit. I just like the fact that she's well proven over course and distance. Last time out, she would have found the 2-4 a bit of a stretch. She also took on male position on that occasion. And if you go back to her runs over course and distance, she has done really well. In fact, she's not missed earning over track and trip, having won over it as well as two placings. So hoping so her spirit with the most um, experience and achievements over track and trip here will be in good stead. Number one, Run Forest Run is a horse I think that is really coming along the right way doing her best work late over the mile last time she went down in second by only a quarter of a length she's run a decent race over this distance before albeit on the poly on that occasion she ran fifth to heartbreak hotel the derby plate taking on the boys age group um competition but nevertheless stronger than what she meets here and looking to be on the up again i do think she should be involved Horse number nine is my pick for third, and that is Purple and Gold from the Jarrett Rug Yard. She, for the most part, has been a very consistent earner in Port Elizabeth, and last time out, she just failed to find the winner's box. And over the mile, she went to the front. She went a really good pace, and she was unlucky to be run down late. She really sustained herself well, gone down only half a length behind Mistress of Means in second. 2000 is a trip which she has tried before. She's enjoyed got to settle her here she won't be able to go as fast as she did last time out but i do think on that promising run she can earn our feature as mentioned the listed port elizabeth gold cup over 3200 meters and again it is the cape visitor that catches the eye in the way of number one strathton i do think that the silvano gelding has more than proven that he is a, a useful stayer a seven-time winner his recent form you look at it and you, you tend to think it's not his best, but if you break it down, he was rested after a great one run in the 2020 edition of the Kenilworth Cup and thereafter needed his first run back over too short. He again lined up in the Kenilworth Cup in earlier this year and ran a fair fifth behind Baybury and again was rested, so he needed his last. So don't read too much into his recent form. He'll be fitter here. He is proven over this trip and he is a horse that drops in class, generally taking on stronger. I do think he's going to be the horse to beat. Locally, it does appear as if the Hreve coupling of number three, Miss Orange, and four, Africa's Gold, will be the horses to beat. And I have tipped them to finish behind Stratton in that, in that order. I do think Miss Orange is is absolutely fantastic since introduced to some ground she's just gone from strength to strength and every time she stepped up in trip she has delivered she has won her last two stepping up to 2-4 for the first time and straight from the 2-4 to 2750 and she's come away a winner on both occasions i don't see her having a problem with the 3-2 here she is relishing the distance at the moment kendall Minnie gets the best out of her and i do think she's a big runner number four africa's gold was the winner of uh, this race last season and he actually won from start to finish style where he dictated and he really stayed on well his last run saw him bouncing back after two rather average performances it looks like he's on the up again and certainly distance and course and distance proven he's one to keep an eye on race eight is the last of the day and we round up with a maiden plate over 2000 meters here the likes of three one and four 
are the horses that catch my eye. Soldier Song will be making his local debut for the Gavin Smith Yard off of high felt form. Ideally, he probably would prefer a touch shorter, but he's got the type of form with some luck in the running. He can make his presence felt. It does look to be at all um, respect a rather weak and open field. Number one, Magnum Fire really was in the deep end last time out when lining up in the, the Derby, the East Cape Derby, and as a maiden, he was very badly out at the weights. So I don't think he actually did a bad job finishing in seventh, nine lengths off of Jäger Moon. His local debut in maiden company was a good second behind in a space, so back to more his division, he can be effective and uh, certainly is distance proven. Number four is where I go for that third placing. And that's King's Fort. He ran a much improved race last time out, which was the 11th of June, when trying a touch further and coupled with the Blinkers. He did his best work late to finish in third behind Highway Star. So it has been one of his more promising performances. And even though he cuts back and trippy, it is at least back on grass with the longer run in. Apparently, the Blinkers will be fitted, so I do think he can find the placings. PA gets underway in race two with the juvenile plate over 1200 meters and here two and five are my selections. I do think that uh, horse number five keep it secret should be more than good enough to get you through but I do think there's a outstanding chance of doubling up with adding in the likes of number two Norton Sound so both go in. On two race three PA numbers here one two and three they are my first three selections this time around in numerical order all of chocolate Mr Mainstay and Brave Star. Race four also will have the three selections in the way of numbers two four and ten El Falak out the maidens for the first time horse number two but certainly a lot to like about that win on debut. Horse number four, Teophilia in hard knocking form. And number 10, Wang Gang Midnight, way down in the ratings. And uh, yeah, looks to be most suited to course and distance. In race five, which is leg four of the PA, I go in with the bank of number eight, and that is Sovereign Supreme. She really does, Sovereign Secret, shall I say, she really does stand out. And in at the weights, in good form, she looks poised to strike. So I do think that she's the horse they all have to beat. Race six, and here the PA gets four selections in a race that I think is wide open. All of numbers one, run, florist, run, five, theatrical moment, who ran on well over the mile last time out, and numbers nine, purple and gold, and ten, Soho Spirit, are inclusions. As far as the listed Port Elizabeth Gold Cup is concerned, I do bank at number one, Strathton. I would find it really disappointing if he didn't manage the first three. So Strathton is a banker for me in the PA. Last leg of the PA, another three selections here, all of number one, Magnum Fire, three, Soldier Song, and number four, King's Fort. I do think that uh, they should be good enough to get us through. Coming back to race three, which is where the pick six kicks off. And here, my original PA numbers of 1, 2, and 3 will get the additions of 4, 6, and 9. Number 4, pure quality. I know he does everything except win, but I don't want to not have him in the pick 6 on the day that he does pop up to win, because he does have it in him. So number 4, pure quality, goes in as a bit of a safety. Number 6, Cyclops Jack, likewise. His recent form, you probably will think I'm mad for including this, but his recent form is poor. Go back, though, to his local debut over course and distance, which has been his only start over it, and he was doing well to finish third behind Torero. So... If there is going to be an upset, I am covered with number six, Cyclops Jack. Number nine, Zulu Citation, making her local debut, takes on male opposition, but could well be good enough in a new centre to make her presence felt. Pick six gets additions of seven, eight, and eleven in race four, the numbers of the PA being two, four, and ten definite conclusions. Seven, eight, and eleven are the likes of Joint Effort, who is um, trying hard last time out in second. Number eight, Torero, ran third in his last start. And number 11, Rock the Cot is back of a break. A good run is expected by the yard, and he is a course and distance um, fan. Moving on to race five 
and that is leg three of the pick six. I'm going to stick with my banker here. That is number eight, Sovereign Secrets. I have extolled her virtues. I think that this race almost looks as if it was put out for her to win. Everything suits her, and I think she's going to be a huge runner. Moving on to race six, and my open field of the day, one, five, nine, and 10 definite horses to go in. And I will still add even more. The likes of number two, Petronella. She may be a maiden taking on winners in handicap company, but she races off fair cape form, and we know that must be respected. Number three, Sacred Ibis. On her form prior to her last, her Natal form prior to her last, you've got to give her a little bit of the benefit of the doubt on her poor local debut. She is definitely cap capable of better. Number four, Palace Queen over raced in her last and still managed fourth. If she settles here, she can get closer. And number 11, Clover Club looks to be on the up again. So don't be leaving her out in what looks to be a wide open field. The Port Elizabeth Gold Cup and Strathton, most definitely a huge run of interest for me. I do, however, add in the local hopes of number three, Miss Orange and four, Africa's Gold. I'm not going to leave them out. They are also solid stayers and can make Strathton work for it. As far as the pick six is concerned in race eight, I stick with the same numbers of the PA, just the three horses. Number one, Magnum Fire, three, Soldier's Song, and number four, King's Fort. The jackpot sticks along the exact same lines as the inner legs of the pick six. It follows it precisely. So there are no changes there. And as far as my best bet and value bet of the day are concerned, I do think that in race five, number eight, Sovereign Secret looks really hard to beat. She does stand out for me. And as far as value is concerned, number 10, Wang Gang Midnight in race four is a horse that catches my eye. Looking forward to racing on Friday. Join us then.